So, up next is Diego Quinones, who is a physicist from Mexico, interested in everything with quantum in its title. Open bracket, except maybe quantum detergent. <laughs> Close bracket. Uh, Diego came to the UK to do his PhD at the University of Leeds and is now a postdoc at the University of Brighton. He thinks science is awesome and tries to share his passion about physics through outreach and public engagement. Can you please put your hands together for Diego Quinones. Thank you. I would like to start my talk with a question. Why did the scarecrow win an award? The answer? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I can see that here we have an example of what we call a dad, <laughs> with this being an example of a dad joke. Also, if you laugh at it and you think you're not a dad, <clears throat> you might want to have a look at that. <laughs> so dad jokes are usually poorly received by other family members. And in some cases, they can even have bad consequences. <laughs> so, why don't you raise the question, why do fathers keep telling them? My hypothesis is that they are a behavior <laughs> fathers develop to encourage this. So, allow me to explain. In nature, the brood leaves the parent's company at a certain age to reduce the probability of predation, find their own resource, or look for potential mates. But humans, having no natural predators, all resources are at the reach of their hands, <laughs> and all basic needs cover, have little motivation to do so. Here is where that joke plays a key role. This is the typical level of enjoyment of a dad joke for a person <laughs> as a function of the age. You can see there is a sudden drop around the age of 12, which is the age when kids become teenagers. It is a well-known fact that teenagers are short-tempered. If a dad says a joke to a teenager, the latter will become visibly upset, even describing physical discomfort by calling the situation to be painful. Therefore, it will be sensible for dads to absorb telling jokes to avoid any confrontation. But what we observe is quite the opposite. <laughs> the more annoyed or embarrassed the teen becomes as a result of the joke, the more likely is that the dad would tell a joke. <laughs> the only logical explanation is that dads are using this joke to motivate their children to avoid any interaction between them. Also, notice there is some probability of a dad telling a joke, even if the potential for annoyance is zero. <laughs> I call this level the vacuum dad joke, which might be an indication of a quantum joke dynamics. <laughs> anyway, uh, probably by now you are already convinced by my argument, but I would like to present more concrete evidence. First, I try to conduct a survey asking people about the amount and quality of the dark jokes of their fathers to see if it was related with this nest living. Sadly, this was proven futile because no matter who I asked, the only answer I could get was all the time and <laughs> just often. <laughs> so instead, I decide to analyze patterns of nest living around the world. Here is the average age of nest living for different European countries. If now we look at the weather in these regions, we can notice that people in colder weather would tend to leave the nest at a younger age. So why is this, you may ask? Well, what happens when the weather is cold? <laughs> we tend to stay indoors. Longer indoor periods mean more opportunity for that child interaction, therefore increasing the exposure to that jokes. <laughs> Proving without a doubt that the main reason for a person to become independent is to avoid the dark jokes. I would like to finish just by discussing the potential impact of this discovery. 
Recently, there has been an increase in the number of young adults living with their parents. This is not due to shortage of affordable housing or lack of financial responsibility by the millennials, as some people suggest, but clearly because of a lack of exposure to dad jokes. <laughs> Today's levels are the highest since the 1940s, at the end of the Great Depression, and back then that had little reason to joke around. <laughs> so, the solution is obvious. We need to increase the exposure of young people to dad jokes. In the UK, a dad spends an average of 1.5 to 2 hours a day with the children. To ensure enough dad jokes, we will need to at least quadruplicate this time, <laughs> which might be an impossible task. So instead, we will need to use public funding to display that joke in crowded areas. <laughs> this might still not be enough. So we will need to think about how to incorporate that jokes into the youngsters' daily activities. So what is the one thing young people do all the time? Uh, no, no, I'm talking about <laughs> looking at screens. Combining this with the state of the art, that joke software, we could create an artificial intelligence capable of delivering that jokes directly to teenagers into healthy daily amounts. <laughs> this, of course, will require a lot of time and money investment. So while we secure the funding, each of us will need to do our own part. Because of this, I would like to leave you with this list of that jokes for you to use <laughs> as much as possible. Thank you. So as a new father myself, uh, I have a four-month-old uh, four daughter, um, I have noticed a desire to start telling terrible puns. So this does tally with my own personal experience. Um, what sort of rate should I start telling jokes at in order to get her to leave home before, uh, <laughs> before she's 20? So it will depend on that, how often I do that joke. So if you want to encourage, like, 10 years, maybe you want to start right now <laughs> telling as much as possible. Excellent, thank you. I mean, obviously, some dads tell really good jokes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I beg to differ, but... I mean, for instance, the joke, why did the cat build the rocket? Because it wanted to go to the moon. Is... Point proven. <laughs> This seems like a fairly uh, risky parenting strategy. Is there not some risk of, of alienating the spouse with all these annoying jokes? Well, that, that might be an unfortunately secondary, uh, <laughs> secondary yeah. function, but yeah, there is little we can do about it, so. <laughs> I also, on your, on your graph charting the ages at which we find dad jokes funny, I noticed that it, it, it happens quite young. You know, we start to get annoyed with these jokes at a very young age, sort of 11, 12-ish. Um, it's obviously far too young to leave the nest. And I, I also wonder if maybe mothers are a little bit keener to keep their kids around for longer. Do you think that could cause any conflict between, between the mated pair? You know, the dad's trying to kind of shove them out and the, the mum's not? Well, you can always tell that when a dad is telling a joke, nobody is enjoying, so there is some strain between. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a question for one of my panel members. I don't get your joke. <laughs> Just, just when we thought last time was the best sperm. Oh. Sometimes, you know, it's, um, it's all in the telling of it. And if you, if, you, if you mistake the word cat for cow, which, which sometimes happens, then... Oh, I'm sorry, I feel so foolish. <laughs> Well, now it's just become a workshop on the joke. Um, Diego Quinones.